I haven't been playing many new games recently. I've just been enjoying the old classics I've already done videos on. But I have been reading a lot of books lately, and over the past few months I've been able to find a few more necromancer stories. Warbreaker is a book by Brandon Sanderson, and although necromancy isn't ever something that any of the characters in the book have that much to do with, it is heavily featured in the world. Most of the story takes place in a country whose entire military force is made up of the lifeless, which are basically zombies, although not the standard kind of moaning, limping, rotting zombies. These are more like empty vessels, a bit like flesh constructs maybe. They're agile and strong, and retain the combat skills they had in life, although none of their sentience remains. They're only controllable with a special password, and they're almost unstoppable war machines, and are greatly feared by the people within this fictional world. A few times in the book you get to see them in action. Brandon Sanderson is really good at making unique magic systems for his stories, and the magic in Warbreaker uses breath and colour. Every person is born with something called breath, and it can be willingly given to another person. Nothing seriously bad happens once a person loses their breath, but they're said to be a bit less colourful and a bit more subdued. Others can collect the breaths, and when they accumulate to a certain amount, they begin to see the world differently. Colours are more vibrant, and they gain some additional senses. In addition to this, the breath allows someone to breathe life into an amber object. Everything in this universe is a potential minion. All that's required is something colourful, like a bright red shirt, and the inanimate object itself. A skilled breather can create a minion out of basically anything. As an example, we'll take a rope. If life were to be breathed into this rope while holding a yellow shirt, the yellow shirt would be drained of all its colour and left dull and grey. The breath would then be possessed by the rope, which could then be commanded to strangle someone to death, or do whatever other task is needed, provided the breather is skilled enough. Once finished, the breath can be reclaimed, and the rope lies dormant again. Breath is also associated with status in the country. The more breaths you have, the more important you must be. Brandon Sanderson writes some really nice books. He's certainly one of my favourite authors, and he's really good at coming up with very interesting magic systems. The Emperor's Soul is another story by Brandon Sanderson. It's one of the many shorter stories within his book, Arcanum Unbounded, the Cosmere Collection. This time the necromancy is more traditional, and also a lot more awesome. The protagonist is a prisoner who is forced to do some work for her enemies, but to make sure that she does not run away, they've employed a special kind of necromancer called the Blood Sealer. Every day he comes to her cell, and draws a small amount of her blood, and uses it to craft a seal which is placed upon her door. If she ever escapes, the seal will sense that she is too far away, and the blood sealer's minions will hunt her down. Fortunately for us, they do indeed hunt her down. As she runs away, she can hear them howling and coming for her. When they catch up to her, a battle ensues. Movement came from the end of the hallway. White-limbed creatures, too thin to be alive. There were five, all in the shape of men with swords. They scrambled down the hall, bones clattering, eyeless skulls regarding her without expression other than their ever-grinning pointed teeth. The minions are further described as having sharpened bones which damage the protagonist when she tries to hurt them. Some of their bones are also wooden, presumably bones damaged in past battles and replaced with wooden ones. Every one of these minions has a red seal stamped on their forehead, to give them life and, I assume, also attuned to her blood so they can track her down. They are also described as being extremely fast and horrific to behold, so there's an element of horror to them which goes beyond a simple skeleton or zombie. They remind me a bit of the ghouls and dark messiah of might and magic, just more skeletal and also with swords. I enjoyed the way the Blood Sealer and his minions were described. Too bad there's no Brandon Sanderson book which heavily features them and their faction. I'd love to read it. The last book I'm going to mention is called Necroscope by Brian Lumley. It was recently recommended to me in the YouTube comments section by a viewer, and I've been enjoying it. 
The book is set during the Cold War sometime, and it has characters from both the Soviet Union and also the West. This book features necromancy of a more subtle variety than what's usually covered on this channel, but it's nevertheless still very powerful and quite interesting. I'm not very far into the book yet, but so far two different types of necromancers have been introduced as characters. One is a Romanian who is working for the Soviet Union, and he's the last necromancer of his kind. His talent is to learn secrets from the dead. He can cut up a corpse and sift through its organs, tasting or consuming parts and learning things from the corpse. He can learn how they died, what their final memories were, etc. The rituals are bloody and graphic, and certainly quite disgusting, but also very interesting. The other kind of necromancer in the book is more of a psychic necromancer. He is a school kid who is able to host the spirits of dead people, allowing them to sort of come in and assume direct control over him, but still do what he wants them to somehow. It's not like they're the pilot completely. He's still in there somewhere pulling the strings. For example, to get good grades in school, he allows a deceased mathematician into his body. While under control of the mathematician, his personality and manner of speaking is very much like the man instead of like himself. Another time he allows a dead soldier into his body and kick the ass of a bully who's shoving him around. So in this way he's kind of like a conduit of dead people, able to make use of the abilities of others for his own ends. It's honestly a pretty useful and powerful talent. It's a different kind of power to raising hordes of zombies, but in some ways it's more useful. I'm really enjoying this book right now, and it's also part of a long series of Necroscope books, so I'm sure I'll be entertained for quite some time. Another thing I really like about Necroscope is it has a vampire in it, but it's not the kind of stereotypical Hollywood kind of vampire. It's a lot more similar to the folklore kind of vampire. So if you're interested in that type of thing, then you'll probably like this book a lot. I hope this video has helped you find a few more interesting things to read. None of these books feature necromancy quite like most of us are probably looking for. I'm not complaining, they're all great stories and I enjoyed reading them, and I'm really enjoying Necroscope right now too. But I'd really like to find more fantasy novels about necromancers raising hordes of zombies and skeletons, and crushing paladins, defacing the mages guild, stuff like that, you know. More of a Forgotten Realms or computer game style of necromancer. I haven't really been able to find more books like that yet, unfortunately. If a book about the Blood Sealers was written, that'd fit the bill. Fingers crossed that Sanderson does that. Thanks for watching, I've got more videos on necromancy stuff coming soon.